بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most compassionate the most merciful all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He who is guided by the will of Allah no one can misguide him and he who is misguided no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Assalamu alaykum shabab abanat Jazakum Allah khair for coming wa rabna subhanahu wa ta'ala yubarak lana I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to descend his blessings and barakah upon every single person of us. Yes, Habibi. What do you say? Huh? No, no, I want to stand. I need to be able to address. When I deal with youth, I would love to stay standing, inshallah. Azzaakum Allah khair. You know my basic condition. You know it, right? What is it? Don't talk. But please, consider it a sadaqah, okay? Brothers and sisters, for me, uh, I really uh, am a very visual person. When I'm speaking, I recall meanings through images. So when any two just move like this, speak together, I forget what I'm saying. Uh, do your best, please, in case, in case, if there's something urgent, you need to speak with your friend, have no problem, just leave the place, go speak, finish, come back again. But don't Talk while I'm speaking, please, as much as you can. Zakum Allah khair. Tayyib, bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. I meet you sometimes once every three weeks or once a month, at least in this, this session. As you might know, especially those who attend with me all the time, you know one of my biggest aims in my life is to fix misconception. And... To add the most important concepts about Islam. Now we are in the masjid. So definitely I'm not coming here to explain math to you or science. Okay? So I will be talking about something has to do with what I believe. And I hope you share me this belief which is the most important thing in our life. Which is our religion. The title of my talk today is The Honor of Defending Your Religion. Sharaf. الدفاع عن الدين The honor And my role now Just to give you an idea Should I feel honored really For the fact that I'm talking and defending my religion And why This is my topic today طيب I need to pay your attention حبيبي I think the average of your ages If I'm not mistaken It could be something around 15 صح An average we have 13, we have 12, we have 16, I think we have 17. Do we have 17 here, by the way? 17, mashallah, more than 17. Do we have 18 here? So 17, I think, is the highest. 16, please, can you raise up your hand? 16 years old, around. 15, mashallah. 14, mashallah. 13, 13, 12, do you have 12? So between 13 and 17, which is I'm expecting exactly, <laughs> the average is 15. Alhamdulillah. Look, I repeat, I said it many times, I repeat it again. I decided to practice Islam as a proud Muslim when I was 15 and a half. So I was exactly in the middle of your age. What I'm doing now after 41, 42 years is exactly what I have decided 42 years in my relation with Allah. So please, don't, don't ever look down to yourself that still you have a time. Still you are so young, you are not. You are not. If you understand what I'm talking, mashallah, it means you can hold responsibility and you know what you are doing and you can take a decision. You can take a decision. I'm a living example, as I am told you. Wallahi, I was younger than 50% of you when I took a decision of doing what I'm doing now. What I'm doing now actually is talking about my religion, teaching my religion, being a proud, really, in my religion, and living as a proud Muslim. So I want to share with you one of my experiences. I have a story today. Maybe some of you listened to this story before, but no harm to refix the concept of this story. Before I tell you the story that happened with me about... about Actually, exactly 18 years ago, this story happened with me in the Far East in Hong Kong. But before that, I need to give you quickly an introduction. The title is what? Of my talk? The Honor 
of defending your religion. Okay? In my introduction, I need to pay your attention to the following. Why should I be proud? Simply, simply, one of the things I advise you to think about, and please, if you are convinced with what I'm saying, adapt it, download it, activate it within your system. <laughs> I'm giving you like something, something looks like a software, an idea, a concept, okay? If you liked it, exactly like when you download the software from the internet into your laptop, <laughs> okay? You download, you ask to activate the software. Why should I be proud? In my understanding, simply because your religion is a unique religion, is the best system. It's not a man-made one. It's a divinely made. It's designed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should be proud. Okay, more details about this great religion. You need to know the following. The religion of Allah, which is completely, alhamdulillah, preserved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Quran and the Sunnah that we received, it contains solutions for humanity. Let's think practically now. Do humanity face the people, human beings, do they face troubles in their, in their life or not? Yes or no? People on earth, do they face problems or not? Yes. Can you give me examples about big, big troubles that human race face? Give me big titles. What do, you, what do you know about big, big problems that human beings are facing now? Yeah? Inflation, which has to do with the economy, which is related to riba. <laughs> the biggest, the biggest reason for inflation is the riba, interest. Subhanallah. It's completely, it's completely resolved in Islam. One of the biggest troubles, racism. Racism. People. Many people are racist. In Islam, it's one of the major sins. There's no favor, no extra level, no value for an Arab against a non-Arab, or a non-Arab against an Arab, or a white against a black, or a black against a white, or whatever color against a color, illa bit taqwa. You live it just with your piety, how close you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 1400 years ago, people of earth, they were all living in racism. So Islam came to fight women's rights. Do you know that all, all cultures on earth, when Islam came, they were not giving to the woman any kind of her rights, generally speaking? No culture, no religion, no system, east, west, north, south, they were giving. Islam came and solved this problem. Women, for hundreds of years, they were not enjoying the right of having their own properties or to take a decision to whom they should be married or even to be asked whether you would love to be married or not. They were completely deprived from this right. Financial. So Islam, we have alcohol. Is alcohol a major problem for human beings or not? Forget the halal and haram. I'm talking about the harm, the troubles. Is it true that being drunk causes troubles for humans or not? Go and, by the way, when I finish, try to go and just enjoy some kind of just few minutes. Ask Mr. Google. You know Mr. Google? Just, okay, chat with Mr. Google. Just give me about statistics about troubles or death rates or car accidents or murders or rape cases or sexual assaults happened because of alcohol. And go just enjoy reading the numbers, the horrible numbers that you will see. One of the major top reasons for car accidents and death in the United States because of drinking alcohol. What is the only religion on earth that prohibits alcohol and is considered had? Do you know the term had? It's a prescribed, restricted punishment and a major sin and no one has the right to interfere in it except Islam. Is it a solution or not? <laughs> Which means when you adapt Islam, if you believe in Islam, by default, alcohol is prohibited. It's prohibited to buy it, to sell it, to transport, to sit with someone, to drink, to sell or to buy or to do anything in addition to the fact of consuming the alcohol. So if Islam is applied, alcohol should disappear. Practically, if Islam is applied, 
few tens and hundreds of millions will stop suffering. This I'm giving you an example. What does it mean that humanity needs Islam? <laughs> Are you with me? Okay. Give me another, another, another simple example. Porno sites. How they are spread on the internet now. The very bad nakedness. Many people, and I know, maybe, maybe some of the boys, they say, Sheikh, no, 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 please don't discuss this, you know, because sometimes you enjoy it. It's haram. It's haram. If you want to say how bad it is, how, how bad they are, try to think if that naked woman in this porno site is your sister or your mother or your daughter. Are you going to enjoy it? This is how you should think. Wallahi, this is how we should think. It's not an easy thing. It leads to addiction. It leads to destruction. It leads to pedophilia. It leads to disasters. The only religion that has a clear, direct regulations about this, completely haram, is Islam. I'll give you a simple example. Drugs. I'm giving you the system itself. By Allah, no one can interfere in this, just very quickly, this is an introduction. I will be dealing with a story. The title is The Honor of Defending Your Religion. I'm giving you an introduction. Why you should be honored? The first thing, simply, I'm giving you an example, because your religion contains solutions for humanity. I gave you an, an example by alcohol and, for example, the bad sexual things, such as the porno sites. But no one has, the, because if it's up to human beings, we will have different opinions about whether this is good or bad and right and wrong. And by the way, and by the way, anything we mention, if we are not Muslims now, just try to imagine this quick, quick test, quick experience. Now, imagine, imagine that we don't have a reference point. God forbid. Imagine for a moment that Quran is not our book. Imagine for a moment that we don't have Quran or a Sunnah. And we are just a random number of human beings from different countries on earth, different cultures. Do you think we can agree on anything? Or we will have different point of view about many things. If I came and ask you, what do you think about paying 10% of our income as tax? Do you think we will agree? We will have different opinions. What do you think about speed limits on the highway? Should it be 80, 90, 70? Different opinions. Shabab would love to have Lamborghini with Ferrari, and they have no limits, 300 plus. Sisters maybe would love to have it 150, 120, 20. And we'll, not, we'll disagree. What do you think? Shall we punish the one who drinks alcohol or not? Different opinions. Maybe you will think from personal point of view, from liberal point of view, from secular point of view, from whatever, from Arabic point of view, from Somali point of view, Pakistani point of view, tens of hundreds. We will, we will not agree. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solved this problem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no, as we say, maslaha. There is no specific, you know, benefit or interest for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we speak about alcohol or interest, or porno, or the family, the destruction of the family, brothers and sisters. Maybe must, some of you, you don't know, alhamdulillah, you are not suffering from what I will be describing, but we can, and we need to have sympathy with many people around us, family around us, around the globe, it's about to be destroyed completely. And Islam is one of the most important solutions for human beings to keep the family. Because in Islam, tell me, where can you find something like وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا After worshipping your Lord in your religion, the direct second priority, and it's a major thing, is to respect and to be in the best status and the best kindness, your parents. Look to some other cultures around us. What happens around us? Many people, they don't care about their parents. Many parents, they don't care about their kids. Many people, they don't care whether to have kids or not. Even if they have them, maybe they will kick them out in the age of 15 or 16 or 17. There is no sympathy, no empathy in many parts around the globe. For practicing Muslims, it's impossible. Because it's not their decision. I'm not talking about Arabs now. I'm talking about practicing Muslims. If you practice, you will know that. Taking care, for example, Islam. 
يا ايها الذين امنوا قوا انفسكم واهليكم نارا وقودها الناس والحجاره الله از كوماندنج دي فاذرز اند ماذرز كوماندنج ذيم بي كيرفول نوت تو ثرو يور كيدز اند يور فاميز انتو ذا هيل فاير بيكوز وين يو دونت كير يو دو تيك كير اوف ذيم دي ويل بي لوست لايك ماني بيبل اراوند اس ناو سو فاميلي الكوهول انترست دراجز بورنو ميردرز كيلينج the sacrosy the, 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 the looking to this life as a sacred issue we have solutions in islam many other cultures they don't have it i'm giving you just in the introduction why you really you should be proud and exam another thing before this is the final point in the introduction before i give you my story in hong kong about 18 years ago the second thing now you need to be proud of the following when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you know adam and eve as we believe allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them down to earth with the story that you know and he decided to keep sending prophets and messengers for the humanity which is you know adam is our father we are of the offspring of adam alayhi salam and you know eve alayhi salam to the best of our knowledge prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said in a hadith After Quran said, وَرُسُلًا لَمْ نَقْصُصُمْ عَلَيْكَ Allah mentioned to Prophet Muhammad Wasallam that we mentioned a number of prophets and messengers to you. However, we a number of prophets and messengers that we have not mentioned. In the hadith, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam was asked by a sahabi, يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ مَا عِدَّةُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ وَالرُسُلُ What is the number of prophets and messengers? He said, عِدَّةُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ مِئَةٌ وَأَرْبَعَةٌ وَعِشْرُونَ أَلْفَ الرُسُلُ مِنْهُمْ ثَلَاثُ مِئَةُ وَخَمْسَةَ عَشَر Look now, why you should be proud of your Islam. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sent 124,000 prophets, 315 messengers. Altogether, we are talking about more one than 100,000 prophets and messengers. We know from them 25 by names. The last one of them is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we are talking about the cream, the last, the seal, the final. After him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is no revelation. Khalas, it's finished. Can you imagine that you are following the last one after 124,000 prophets? Do you know this? You are following the one who came at the final, at the end, after 124,000, Allah decided to conclude the 124,000 prophets, 315 messengers by Muhammad Sallallahu With the book of the Quran that you have, with the sunnah that you have, with the hadith that you have, with the understanding that you have up to the day of judgment, which is the end of this life, you have the system, you and I. We are the final, the seal. The chosen. By the way, when you decide to say Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, actually you decide to be chosen. You need to feel proud. Type. Right. This is the introduction. What is the title of our talk? The honor of defending your religion. So number one, you need to feel, to understand, to realize the honor for the fact that you are a Muslim. If you were born as a Muslim, alhamdulillah, this is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need, you need really to appreciate it. If you are a revert or a convert, it's another gift. You did it by choice. You decided to come to something that is honored. Shabab, khalikum ai. Please, brothers, I think we agreed. Habab, shabab, mobiles, cell phones, please, please, please. And I repeat. I repeat, I have no problem if you want to leave to talk outside and come back. Even if you want to check your cell phone, you can have it outside, come back again. Don't do it in front of me, please. Mashi? Please, Jazakum Allah Khairan. Taib, let me... Ahlan wa sahlan. Kif halak? Shu akhbarak? Can anyone help me just to close the... Uh... Huh? Habibi, can, can you lock it, please, so not to come again? Thank you. 
Now try to focus with me for a few minutes with this story. This story happened with me about 18 years ago. Some of you, maybe you might have heard it from me, but as I said, no harm, we can. I mean, who's the brother of this uh, child? Who's the brother? <laughs> He himself came and looked at it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> where's the parents of this kid? I think he's hmm? hmm? The brothers, can anyone take this kid, please? Who's the father or the mother of this kid, please? <laughs> Allah yan ka Zakum Allah khairan Okay I forgot what I was saying uh, I want to when you start the story now Where Hong Kong Hong Kong okay yes Zakum Allah khair okay please now try to focus sometimes simple real story could make a shift in your life Now about 18 years ago I was invited to visit Hong Kong and it was my first time in my life visiting Hong Kong and China. So I was invited to China to give like a series of speech. However, brothers, and I don't I don't know what how can I ask you to stop this thing. <laughs> You, you, we, wallahi, you can leave. I'm, I'm not forcing anyone to stay. Wallahi, if you don't want to listen, just leave the place. Go do whatever you want and you come back again. 18 years ago, I was invited to Hong Kong. It was my first time. Now, it was a series of events. At that time, it was the biggest and most beautiful and interesting event ever in my life. I was invited to attend and to give a lecture in a ceremony called Faith Declaration Ceremony. Actually, the title of my topic in that event was Why Should I Be Proud to Be Muslim? <laughs> now, my speech was surrounded by 21 persons, 19 sisters and two brothers, from many different countries, they wanted to declare their Islam. They are non-Muslims who decided to convert or to revert to Islam. So about 10, they were sitting to my right hand, another 10 sitting to my left hand, and about maybe 200, 300 persons, they were attending the ceremony. So I was in the mid, MashaAllah, they welcomed me by, say for example, the head of the community there, the, uh, the Muslim brothers, because the majority of Muslims in Hong Kong, they are either from Chinese origins or Pakistani origins, the majority of them. It's either or. So Chinese and Pakistani brothers, the head of the society, the head of X, Y, Islamic, whatever, they were sitting on the table around me. So I was waiting for my turn to start. So they started asking brothers and sisters, they were, to the best of my knowledge, from the UK, United Kingdom, China, Russia, Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong. <laughs> you know, different countries is what I remember, about seven or ten of them. So different cultures, different backgrounds, 19 females, two males. So look what used to happen now. They used to give them like a A4, you know, pages like this, each one of them was sitting in, as individual in a chair. Each one of them, because they came from different cultures and backgrounds, they speak different languages. So they are asked to say the kalim or the shahada, which is, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. So, because they don't know Arabic, and some of them they don't know even English, each one of them he received in advance, before the ceremony, a piece of paper like this, and they wrote on it in his or her language with the transliteration. Do you know what I mean by transliteration? They used their own alphabets 
to be able to pronounce the word ashhadu alla ilaha for example this is an arabic word but how we write it in english we say a s h h a d a l l etc so this is called the transliteration the sound is arabic the language is arabic but the letters that we write the sound with it is english this is called transliteration okay so in different you know uh, thai language malayo language russian language chinese language each one of them so they started now saying the shahada i'm still waiting sitting in the middle my lecture has not started yet so now many of them the fact the majority they were sisters so it was a big event very emotional because they are leaving their religions <laughs> some of them they came from buddhist background hindu background christian background some of them they were atheists non believers different cultures and religions so all of them they are coming to islam can you imagine 21 not one or two 21 big number it was the biggest in my life ever that i witnessed something like that and i was the key speaker so i was waiting for them to finish look now try to picture this so to imagine what happened with me so they were reading like this ashhadu Allahu, and some of them they started you know shaking the paper you know because then start crying some of them they could not continue because of the emotional event because they are living their religion some of them they were holding the sheet of paper they were making mistakes in reading because it's a new letters for them they say ashadu lahi now while this was happening one of the sisters sitting in the front of me in the first row, she was wearing a hijab. So I was able to realize that she's a Muslim. From her appearance, I thought she might be either from Thailand or Philippines or similar to these countries. So she's about 50 plus. So she was leaving her place. Each time someone makes a mistake on his paper, she used to come to him or to her. To finger to put the finger exactly on the right word for example he say for example ashadu no it's ashadu she corrects for her or for him the mistake she kept on coming and going back coming going back you she still moving to correct them so i was watching and really i became my mind became busy with this sister why she's interfering in this i mean what's the relation between this sister that I know nothing about here, and the rest. So I'm talking. So when they finished everything, they say the shahada and all of them, and most of them, they were crying. I, before I start, I spoke with the head of the Muslim community there. I said, brother, can you tell me what is the relation between this sister and everyone in this hall? Why? She kept leaving and coming and, you know, and correcting. What's the relation? He laughed at me and I said just I want to tell you this is this is uh, a domestic worker do you know what I mean by a domestic worker in their terminology she cleans houses <laughs> her work is I said okay I mean this is not my question my question what's the relation between this sister and those people she said, just to let you know that this sister is in charge of bringing 650 person to Islam she managed to convert six, I, I, 650 persons. Most likely, he wanted to tell me what? Those people, they came to Islam because of hell. So I was shocked because I was, what? This simple, humble sister? He said, yes. And he told me she is working as a domestic worker. She cleans houses, which means... She's busy in a very humble, humble, you know, let's say type of work. So I finished my talk. Look to the surprise now. We'll come to the end of the story in a few minutes. Now, I did my talk about why should I be honored to be a Muslim. Once I finished my talk, I came to this sister. I discovered that she's from Philippines and her name is Medina. Sister medina look to the conversation what is the title of our topic the honor of defending your religion look what happened between me and her i said sister medina wallahi 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for what you have done. Because I, I learned that 650 persons, they were brought to Islam through hair. So I was, you know, looking at her as a giant da'iya. MashaAllah, what did she do? So after I finished, she was very embarrassed. And look what she said. She said, Doctor, I'm not so ambitious. I'm just targeting the 1,000. Targeting what? One what? 1,000. She has already managed to bring to Islam 650. And she's not so ambitious. Just 1,000. She's just targeting 1,000. Wallahi, I was shocked. So I was talking with myself. I said, I myself at that time, I was holding a PhD in comparative religions. I did my PhD in the UK. I traveled in tens of countries. I met thousands of people. I traveled hundreds of cities. And I was not able to convert to Islam at that time, not even one person. <laughs> now, she was, and look, look, look now to my points in this story. She was 50 plus. She's from Philippines, traveling, and most likely those people, they come from a very difficult economic situation, and they work to support their families back. She was cleaning houses, domestic worker, which means she was busy. In addition, socially, cleaning houses, does it make you multimillionaire? I'm asking. Cleaning houses, does it make you multimillionaire? Does it even make you rich? Does it even cover your basic needs? <laughs> Hardly. This is a very humble type of work. Hardly you can survive with it, which means she was so busy, so poor, in a very difficult economic situation, still working, very busy, very tired, yet she's doing her best to serve her religion. To a degree, then I learned later that she used to do the following with a group of volunteers. Here comes to you now, the message to you. She used to go to the weekend, every weekend to go to the streets. She was not wasting her time. She felt that she's proud of her religion because she knows, she believes that this religion was sent by Allah to every single human being. Hong Kong is one of the most if not number one or two most cosmopolitan city on earth. Do you know what does this word mean? Cosmopolitan? Just one? Yes, Faisal, huh? Sorry, Asif, Mamdouh. Mamdouh, what does the word cosmopolitan mean? Many ethnicities in one city. Yes, this is part of it. Cosmopolitan means has a lot of ethnicity, ethnic, ethnicities, ethnicities plus different cultures, different religions. So cosmopolitan, which means a mixture of a high number of different cultures, ethnic groups, and religions. Big mixture. One of the big cities of this is Hong Kong, Dubai, Frankfurt, Birmingham in the UK. They are called big cosmopolitan cities. And I believe now, Greater Toronto. <laughs> because, you know, Sometimes we have about more than 100 different cultural, ethnic, religious group. Anyway, the idea, this sister, she's 50 plus. She's not young. She needs to take rests. She came from a poor economic situation. She needs to support her family, which means she has enough excuses to say, Oh, Alhamdulillah, I've done my best. Alhamdulillah, I'm doing the best of the best. And Allah knows that she does not have a PhD. She does not have a bachelor degree. She did not go to very well-known high university. She does not have a support of a family. Actually, she is supporting her family. Yet, this did not stop her from serving and being proud of her religion. To a degree that her target was, I don't want to leave this dunya before at least I want to guarantee in my account 1,000 reverts in my scale of hasanat. What kind of, what, what type of way of thinking? If she does not believe that the religion that she's holding, she believes in is high, big value. Why should be, she will be doing this? I finished this story. I will conclude now. Then I will open for a discussion. Because as I told you, respected brothers and sisters. Now, 
the gap age between you and me is 40 years. When someone comes to speak with you about his experience, as I remember myself when I was in your age, one of the great benefits of speaking between different ages is try to learn from the experience of someone who did many things before you. You ask him about your experience. How did you such and such? Why did you decide to do such and such? What was the tool that you used to solve such and such problem? This is our ethical duty, and it's not always easy for you to have a time to speak with someone else. So, the title of my talk is The Honor of Defending Your Religion. You were, majority of you, you were born as Muslims. I don't know if we have reverts or converts, but I can maybe tell from your faces, the majority of you, you were born Muslims. So you need to appreciate. In my introduction, your religion contains the solution. Your religion contains the big power how to save humanity in their troubles and problems and needs. I highlighted for those who came late the problem of alcohol, drugs, porno sites, interests, you know, car accidents. All of this we have. Family, destruction of the family. We have a solution. We have a very clear, restrict, powerful system to let you respect your parents so that the family will live in peace instead of destruction and chaos all the time. So humanity, they need the system. But how human beings will be able to have an idea about your system if you yourself does not really live the system? If you yourself does not feel proud of your system, if you yourself does not talk about your system, if you yourself does not know about your system, how? So you need to know, you need to apply, you need to live, you need to be proud, you need to be speaking about, so the people will be interested and they will discover the jewel that you are holding. You need to think, and let me finish with this simple example. Imagine, can anyone give me his cell phone? I will not open it, just I will use it just as a, okay. Imagine, look, let's imagine that this is iPhone 15 Pro Plus, 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 Plus. It does not exist, but let's imagine, okay? Alhamdulillah, mashallah. Congratulations, brother. Alhamdulillah. 15 Plus, Plus, Plus. <laughs> so imagine that this is iPhone 15 Plus or Pro or whatever. Let's imagine it, one of the best cell phones or, uh, you know. I, I have it now. I received this as a gift. And I was trained and I was given the knowledge how to use this device. This device, is it useful for us? Can we benefit from this? Yes or no? Do we benefit? Yes, many things. Telephone calls, videos, text messages, chatting, Instagram for the sisters. Yes, I mean, can sisters live without Instagram? Without Instagram? Can you live without it? Some of them I think you can't. <laughs> okay? Social media, finance, bank accounts, video editing, many things. It's uh, actually, it's 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 basic part of our life. You know it. So that's why I want to use this example. So imagine that none of you has iPhone. The majority of you, you don't have Aslan any kind of cell phone. And those who have cell phones, they have a very, very background, sorry, backward old cell phones. Very bad Wi-Fi, very bad uh, image resolution, no video editing, no ability to contact the internet. This is all of your cell phones. And I have this one, which is definitely the best and the most powerful. And I was given the following message. Please enjoy using this iPhone. And then I was given a big store that contains thousands of similar for free. After I realized it, I was asked to give you an idea about this cell phone. Then to convince you to go to have your free, okay, cell phone. But you have to go and take it by yourself. Can you imagine? This is exactly how you should think about Islam. Islam is like holding this gift 
and you are the only one who have this best gift, the people they are in need for this important gift, you have a good idea about it because you are using and you can tell that the rest they don't have something similar. They have something else but much more less. They have the old version of Galaxy Samsung, old version of Huawei, very backward version of Nokia. You have the best iPhone 15 Pro Plus. None of them is able to realize how powerful your processing system is, your video, your uh, everything is the best of the best of the best. You have it, you know it, they don't know it. So it's your duty to talk about it to make a presentation about it, to try to let some people try it, touch it, see it. Whoa, okay, how can I have it? Free, but you have to order it by yourself. Go, just have it. I can't force you to have it. Go and have it. Just get into that store. Just hold yours by yourself. You have to do it. You say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. I can't force you. <laughs> my, my job is to let you f have the feeling how beautiful that I'm enjoying prayer. Many people, they don't worship Allah. They are lost. Their hearts are empty. They don't know the tranquility, the peace, the raha. That they don't have it. They don't have it. And they don't know how to have it. You know. You know what does the sujood mean. You know the prostration. You know what does it mean to do the tasbih. You know what does it mean to believe in qada wal qadr. You, are, you don't think to kill yourself simply because you believe in Allah that Allah is the one who is controlling everything. If you lost something, you have a system that gives you answers for the most biggest troubles in your life. What if I lost a dear person? I have an answer. Because I believe in the akhirah, in the hereafter. Prophet Muhammad lost three out of his four daughters. His wife Khadija, his uncle Abu Talib, and three of his sons, Ibrahim, Abdullah, Abu Qasim, Wal Qasim. When he buried Ibrahim, one of his sons, he cried. He said a very famous statement, which is part of our religion now. When he was burying his son, he's giving you, because you believe in the Akhirah, this is a solution. Okay, I lost my son, no problem, you will meet him in the hereafter. To Allah we belong and to Allah we will return back. But what if, what if, okay, help others just to show off? No. To take a photo while you are giving a sadaqah? Okay, see me in the Instagram now. I'm giving a sadaqah to a faqir. No, 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 no. This is riyah, shirk asghar. Do it for the sake of Allah. But why should I be helping others? Because in your system, you have a complete another vision compared with others. In my system, sadaqah, basically is I do it out of being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I believe in my system, in this solution, that I'm not the real owner of the money. The money belongs to Allah. I'm just having as a trust. I'm a trustee person and the money is a trust. I'm, I'm, I'm just an, like an employee, okay? I'm just taking caretaker of the money. Who's the real owner of the money? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, when you pay, you don't feel or have arrogance that you are... No, 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 no. You have to be humble because simply you are a servant. And the owner, the landlord, the master is commanding you to help your brother. So even when we give, we have no arrogance. So the, is this a, an amazing way to solve problems, ethical problems between the people or not? And the long story. Anyway, we have just a few minutes left. As I said, and let me finish by this, then I will receive your question if you have a question. Respect brother and sister. I say, we don't have always opportunity to have these discussions. If you loved part of what I said, if you are convinced, please take it, download it into your system, activate it. Be proud. Go and live it. Seek the knowledge. Let the people know so that you will be proud when you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. If you have questions now, I finished my talk. I will receive at least one or two questions, one from brother, one from sisters, two, two, if I have questions. Otherwise, for me, I'm finished, inshallah, or I have finished. I hope I'm not finished. Any questions about what I said? Brothers and sisters, any question? 
if you were listening طبعا questions questions yes حبيب تفضل تفضل الايفون بلس 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 15 اوكي yes I speak loudly You, you, a non-Muslim, you mean? Yeah. Okay, a very good question. The brother here is asking, Zahallahu khayran. In our schools, you know, the majority, the majority are non-Muslims. Sometimes, some of them, they might insult Islam. So, okay, how should I react? You have levels. Level number one, the general rule. Most of the people, they do this out of ignorance. They don't know. They are brainwashed because of the media. So the first thing to do, be nice, be kind, have a conversation with high, wise attitude and try to know where did he bring his information from, why he or she is holding this attitude. Try to understand it in a very nice way. Then explain how big mistake he's committing in terms of his knowledge. And the majority of people really will be shocked and will apologize because they were they are expressing their big mistaken attitude depending on the first source. Type. What if, no, 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 he or she knows the truth and he's a Islamophobic or someone who holds, hates. Is it possible? Yes. You are living in a country that contains a law. Go and complain through legal channels. Let's the people of authority bring him to justice even if, if it led him to go to the court and to jail. Because this is what happens with any one of us if you do the opposite thing. <laughs> True or false? If you insulted a minority or a group while knowing that you won't really, you will be accused of such and such. Okay, use the justice of the law against him. But the thing that you don't do it, please don't react in a bad emotions or don't use any kind of physical violence against anyone. Because you can, you can bring the justice to your case, as I told you, through two steps. Step number one, explain. You know where I did bring this from? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِنْ أَحَدُ مِنَ الْمُشْلِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ أَبْلِغُ مَأْمَنَهُ ذَلِكَ بَأَنَّهُمْ قَوْمٌ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ in the This ayah was revealed about the time of fighting in the battlefield. Imagine a Muslim with a non-Muslim when they were fighting. War, war. Literally, a war is occurring now. Allah tells Muslims, if it happened while you are fighting with your enemies, one of your enemies... He stopped and said, I want a time, I have some questions about your religion. <laughs> By the Islamic law, you are obligated to stop fighting him and to give him a haven, a secured area. Which means, which means give him the full protection till he listens to the word of Allah then give him protection to be in his safe area because they don't know. They are fighting you out of hatred because they don't know. They think that you are a bad person. They don't know how wonderful you are because the media tells something. You know, some people are benefiting from this. Some people are paid to do this. Some people are paid to spread hatred for many political reasons, political agendas, you know, big calculations behind the scenes. So he could be a victim. He did a mistake. Fix it. He himself might convert to Islam. Or at least will respect. He might be become a da'iyah. The majority are like this. The minority, they have a very hatred attitude. Use the law against them. Very simple. Wallahu alam. Any other question, sisters? Final call question? No questions? Taib, jazakumullah khair. Barakallah fikum. Ya'atikum alf hafiyah. Jazakumullah khair. Make dua for me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.